Hello everyone, this is Theo. Today I have another sketching tutorial for you. Today we are going to sketch this bridge, which is Anderson Bridge along Singapore River. I have actually sketched this on location the other day. You can check out the video that I have made. So this is the view looking straight down the bridge. And a few days later, I went back to the same location again and discovered that there is actually a better place to draw the bridge so that the bridge looks more representative. So this is the second sketch that I made on location. This bridge is quite challenging to draw because there is a lot of details, there is a lot of support structure and the perspective, you can see here it's bigger and as it moves away into the background it becomes smaller so there's some perspective going on and also there are some tall buildings in the background and some organic subjects like the trees, foliage and water. So this is actually quite a nice subject to turn into a tutorial just to show you my thought process. So this is the sketch that I made for my patrons. The full video is actually 50 minutes long, but um, I think I'm going to recreate that tutorial in a more, in a very simplified version just for you guys, just for people who don't have time to go through the whole 50 minutes. This reference photo can be downloaded from the video description below. So the first thing I will do is to take some measurements first. So the bottom of the pencil to where my fingers are, this is considered one unit. So let's see, the bridge is about two units and the bridge is about half a unit high, two units wide. And we see some trees here about one unit wide and this part here it's about one unit wide so this thing here it's like a square and this is like a horizontal rectangle so now that we have the measurements we can draw on paper today I will not be using any pencil I'm going straight with ink to keep this simple so the whole scene is about four units wide so I'm the whole scene is around four units wide. So I'm going to divide this page of paper into four parts. So this is the midpoint and this will be sort of one unit. So this page is not very big, so there is no way for me to draw a lot of details. I'm going to put my fingers here to uh, represent the unit. So this is one unit from the left side of the bridge to the almost the center of the bridge. I'm going to draw that little um, gate first. I'm going to draw it smaller than usual. Smaller than usual because I have a tendency to draw bigger and bigger as I go on. The next part is quite crucial because we want to get a perspective right. So the top line here, it's going to align if you move horizontally to the right side, it's going to align here right at the top of this hand railing and the bottom of this Thing here this gate here it's going to be below the hand railing and this line here this is not a horizontal line it's tilted slightly upwards this black there's a black beam below the bridge and that's the horizontal line and then the bottom of the bridge is tilted down like this and the river line is tilted up like this so the important thing to note is where this aligns uh, here because we are going to draw this part right now. My fingers are still there to help me position everything. So this part here, it's a bit higher. And then goes to the right side. And we have this um, extrusion here. And this will go up like this and down like this. Remember, this is a square, so if you visualize a square, it looks something like this. If you are not that confident, of course, you can go with pencil first. Today, I just want to save some time because this is the 
third time or fourth time I'm drawing this bridge. Now when you're drawing something like this, um, try to sort of balance the subject. So for example, this part here, if I use this as a unit, I can measure it to the bottom. So I need to draw this a bit uh, lower because this height equals to this height here. There are some steps there. which I'm going to just draw very simply. By the way, I changed the pen because I ran off ink. I'm not going to have too much details here, just the placement, uh, the placement of this is important. So now that I have these two elements, I can join the bridge together. The top of the railing is actually around here. This is the top of the railing and it's going to end here so I just need to draw a smooth straight line over when you're drawing something like this move your whole arm rather than your wrist and this is the bottom of the hand railing which will be slightly lower here the bottom of the hand railing is also tilted up slightly and as you draw towards the right side, the space will start to open up. This is the horizontal beam that is just beneath the bridge. This is perfectly horizontal. Now I may want to draw some vertical lines to represent the hand railings here. This is about as much detail uh, as I would add to this bridge. And there is another horizontal beam right below and this line will tilt downwards like this. Now we can draw the arch. The highest point of the arch is, if you use this as a measurement tool, it's about one third of this. So the arch is tallest around this point here. I place a dot there and the arch will end here there's this little circle here um, some decoration thing going on i just want to draw that in because the arch ends right here behind this uh, circle so when you are drawing pay attention to what you are looking at and then you can go over a few times uh, without putting down the ink first just get the motion going and then when you're confident enough, you can uh, go straight with ink. So I'm going to draw this in one swift movement. Oops. So you see here, this curve, it's, well, it's not that curvy. Sometimes you may have to tilt your pitch around to get a better, uh, get a better way to draw that curve more smoothly. So maybe I will, I'm just going to re restate the line here a bit all right i think this is much better this curve is much better although uh, this doesn't look that good right now now for the support structure uh, let me just draw the thickness of the arch first now that we have the big shape like this we can draw the support structure within now if you take a look at the photo you may notice that there are a lot of tilted lines. Some of them will intersect around here in the middle to form some sort of triangle. And I counted three triangle. One is right here. The middle triangle is here. And it goes down like this and like this. Now the intersection for the three triangles, it's right up here and right down here. So, let me draw another one. As much as possible, I will try and get the angles uh, right. So uh, I think I drew this a bit wrong. So this intersection here should be much higher. So let me try again. So this time I'm going to place the intersection point much higher like this. So observation, it's really important. And the tilted line here. There is another intersection point here. So the intersection, it's quite, it's above the middle and quite low on the near to the hand railing. And this are the three triangles I was referring to. So for the other tilted lines, you can just draw them uh, like that. 
I am not going to draw the thickness of those support structure because this is a very small piece of paper. There is no way for me to draw well, so much detail. So I'm just going to use a single line to represent those um, support structure. And as the tilted lines move towards the right side, they will start to tilt down. So you may want to capture those angles. And this bridge curves like this. Now, in addition to the tilted lines, there are also some vertical lines behind. So I want to draw those as well. I'm going to draw those with thinner lines because they are behind. The tilted lines are the more important lines because they appear right in front. And if you take a closer look, there are also tilted lines behind on the other side of this bridge. So I also want to draw those lines as well but thinner. Basically, this bridge has a lot of detail. So after I fill in all the details, I notice that there is actually another arch behind this bridge. The arch will stop here. It will start here. Is it? Yeah, it starts here. So I'm going to draw that curve for the arch it goes behind like this and the thickness of that arch and for that arch it also has some support structure so I want to draw those in as well but with very thin lines in fact right now I am not looking at the reference photo I'm just adding some vertical lines as suggestions for the uh, support structure. At the top here, I see some, there's this cross beam that goes across. So I want to draw the cross beam. And there is another arch here. I think it's around here. Starts here and ends here. So it goes up very slightly and comes down. Those are the little details there. All right, so the bridge is, I would say, considered um, done. Mm, now I can draw the waterline. The waterline will start here, very close to the bridge, and then it will tilt down. Um, I would say this is one unit, and then the waterline will be one unit away, so it will be here. So when you draw, you can see that this line is tilted up like this. And if you look at the reference photo, you can see that it's tilted as well. On the left side, we have this tree here, which I'm going to draw very simply. This tree, it's behind, uh, behind this gate thing. So I'm just getting the general shape of the tree. There is another building behind. There is another tree here. And this tree has a lot of roots that go down to the water. And there are some plants here as well and roots that go down to the water. So I'm just scribbling um, this area here. This building. And now let's draw these. Um, there's another tree here. Almost the same height as this tree. So let's not go above it like this. And there is this uh, building, which um, this big block of building, it's going to take up about this weave. So it's going to end right here. So I'm going to start by drawing the back first. And it's going to be around here. This is the tallest place. Now my placement of the tree, it's a bit, I would say it's a bit off. Um, did I draw it correctly? I think I think I should have drawn this even smaller, but doesn't matter. We have the tree blocking the details, so um, the tree is quite helpful. So I don't have to draw all those details in. So I'm just drawing this big building very simply without a lot of detail. 
I'm just drawing the lines that contribute to the form of this building. There's a flag here, and there is another building behind. It's an office building. So this is the shape of the office building, another taller one behind, another one higher like this. And this is the really tall one. This tall one has some horizontal line going. And there's a white building and a brown building. So this part here, I my proportion is a bit off because because I drew this building, uh, the proportion for this building is a bit off, so it affected all of the rest of the sketch. But um, not that big a mistake. And then we have the tree here. I'm drawing the tree to overlap this structure here. So there's one tree that overlaps this structure, and the other tree is actually behind this structure. So this is the other tree behind the structure. And there is a lamp here with some little detail. Again, because this is a very small sheet of paper, I cannot do I cannot draw a lot of details. And this vertical line represents that represents the building on the right side. This sketch is almost done. Now I just want to draw this um, uh, thing that prevents what's this called? Railing and railing. So this starts here. And it will come down to this side and move down vertically like this. I am using the bridge as a measurement too to help me draw this. And the white part here will come down here to the left side and then turn right slightly. And then it comes down like this. And we have this. So there is this uh, see-through hole there to, to sees into the river. And this is the base and this line connects here. And there is this uh, live boil here. And yeah, I think this is it. This part of the video is in time lapse because I did not like how the colors turned out. There's something wrong with the sizing on this particular page and with this limited color palette. All the colors, they look kind of muted. So I'm just going to skip the instructions for this color mixing painting portion of the video. Sometimes when I color, it's sort of a hit and miss. Today, I think I missed the mark. I'm satisfied with the ink drawing, but not so much with the coloring. Let me show you what's on the opposite page. So with a side-by-side -side comparison, I can straight away tell that the colors here are more vibrant, even though this is supposed to be the same paper from the same brand, but here the colors seem to be soaked into the paper. And here you can see, I use the same mix for this tree here. And here it looks a bit more um, pale, a, more, a bit more muted. Of course, still more vibrant compared to here because the paint here, it's uh, Daniel Smith paint, if I remember correctly. So it's a bit more high quality. But overall, um, you can see the difference quite obviously. The colors here are more vibrant. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. If you want to check out more sketching tutorials, I have many free ones on my YouTube channel. The link is in the video description below. And if you want to learn even more about sketching, consider supporting me on Patreon, where you have access to more than three years worth of very detailed sketching and watercolor tutorials. Link is in the video description below as well. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.